One of the reasons that the internet is so fun to talk about is that there are some really deep design principles um, that have really led to its success, I think. Um, and it's, it's been cool to see such a, an incredible explosion of growth and innovation on the internet. And part of that is connected to core design decisions that early internet architects made that determined how the internet is designed. So let's talk about uh, probably one of the most famous and one of the most interesting, which is something called the end-to-end -end principle. Remember that Originally, Surf and Khan had designed a protocol suite for the internet that had a lot of different features, reliability, um, flow control, order delivery, and that was separated out into two components. So there is the IP protocol that all computers connected to the internet have to run. That's sort of what you need to do to be part of the internet is to run the IP protocol. But the IP protocol is also combined with something called the transmission control protocol. So the IP protocol provides this unreliable packet delivery within the core internet itself. Best effort. I'm going to do my best to get a packet from A to B. What brings in ordering, reliability, and some of these other features is TCP. What's interesting about TCP is that TCP does not run in the core of the internet. TCP is run on the end hosts. So if there's, a, uh, if there's two computers, A and B, and they want to exchange data in a reliable way, they want the reliability that, that TCP provides, the packets that they transmit through the core internet are still transmitted using IP. But TCP runs on their own local machines. So TCP runs at the edges of the internet, and the, IP, the unreliable IP protocol runs in the middle. And the idea of the end-to-end -end principle is that as much functionality as possible should be pushed out of the core of the internet into the edges. So rather than trying to make the core of the internet implement, for example, reliable packet delivery, which would be fairly, uh, fairly complicated and potentially quite expensive, what the end-to-end -end principle says, you know what, let's just leave it to the two computers that are communicating with each other. So for example, if A sends a packet with uh, the destination B, and that packet starts to be transmitted through the network, and at some point, let's say that packet is dropped, you know, bad stuff happens, packets get dropped. So what, what happens? Well, the IP layer says, you know what, I did my job. I'm done. I was trying to deliver the packet and it failed, but it's not my problem. I didn't guarantee that the packet would arrive. So what happens? What happens is that TCP, which is running on A and B, needs to detect the fact that this packet didn't arrive and repair it. So what will happen is at some point, B will send a notification. B's TCP implementation will, will tell A, hey, by the way, I never got that packet. You said you were going to send me. Um, and then A will retransmit the packet at some later point. And the nice thing about the end-to-end -end principle is that there's two really nice things about it. One is that it keeps the core internet very, very simple. So for example, whatever part of the internet dropped this packet doesn't have to worry about it. It's OK to drop packets sometimes on the internet. That like you know that's what happens in life right sometimes the things don't go to plan don't go to go according to plan right um, and the other thing that's really neat about the end-to-end -end principle is it allows a lot of innovation to go on at the endpoints so by keeping the core network simple it's also not doing more than you need and so if i and it also means for, for example let's say i want to experiment with a new way of transmitting data back and forth between these two computers i don't have to implement it within the core internet i don't have to change all of these other computers that are involved all i have to do is have two computers that agree to change it or to speak a new protocol. And so it's extremely easy to roll out new protocols on the internet because of the end-to-end -end principle, because all you need to do is convince a bunch of computers to speak the protocol, and then it will work. Um, the IP layer is also useful because, again, it's not doing more than you need. Um, if the IP layer, for example, implemented reliable delivery, there are certain services that don't need it. And those services, if they wanted to use the internet, would have to have it. There'd be no way around it. And so the internet would be doing a lot of work. The core IP protocol would be doing a lot of extra work to try to provide reliability even for services that didn't need it. So this is the design principle called the end-to-end -end principle, which means keep the core of the computer network as simple as possible, push any additional functionality out to the endpoints whenever possible.